Hey watch lovers, Brad from Brent Miller Jewelers. And today I have for us two watches that just came back in stock that I thought would be a pretty good comparison side by side if you were looking for a sub 40 millimeter watch that can really go anywhere, do anything on a stainless steel bracelet, um, time and date only. You know, looking at these both, on my left is the Tag Heuer Carrera date model, 39 millimeter case. And on my right is the Omega Aquaterra. Uh, again, with your date complication down there at the six o'clock uh, position. So take a look at these side by side. The Carrera I measured uh, above the crown, diagonally across the case at 38.8 millimeters. I measured it at 38.5, uh, just straight across the polished bezel there. And the crystal itself was a th even 34 millimeters on the Carrera. On the Aquaterra, I have a 38 millimeter case, again, above the crown, above the crown, diagonally across the case, even 38 millimeters across its polished bezel, 37.7 millimeters. And the crystal was 32.5, so about a millimeter and a half smaller crystal. And I think if you look at them, there is a little bit more negative space on the Carrera, and you can see it is a slightly larger dial uh, with the crystal as well. However, I think they both wear fantastic. Uh, I'll throw them on wrist here shortly. Uh, moving along, the Carrera is 11.5 millimeters thick compared to the Omega Aquaterra here, a little bit thicker at 12.2, so a little over half a millimeter thicker. And then lug the lug on the uh, Carrera, 45.2 versus 44.7 on the Aquaterra. So the Aquaterra is a little bit thicker, but a little bit shorter lug to lug um, versus the, uh, the Carrera here. And you can look at them, the, the polished bezel is a little bit wider as well. Um, just if you kind of looking at them for that other angle on the Aquaterra compared to the, uh, the Carrera here. Uh, let's see, the lug width, 20 millimeter lug width on the Carrera. We have a 19 on the Aquaterra, tapering down to 18 at the deployant style clasp on the Aquaterra, or on the, uh, the Tag Heuer here. So 20 to 18. And uh, the Aquaterra, you have 19 down to 17 on a butterfly style clasp. So uh, difference in clasp, obviously. And then obviously um, looking at the case back, you do have a exhibition case back on both. The Omega is going to have the Omega in-house caliber 8800 with 55 hours of power reserve. Well, the tag is going to have the caliber five movement with 38 hours of power reserve. So in-house movement on the Omega is gonna uh, justify the price here uh, shortly when I get to that. Um, looking at the crowns, you have a non-screw down crown. You do have the signed crown here, non-screw down, 100 meters of water resistance on the Carrera versus the signed screw down crown on the Aquaterra, 150. So 50 extra meters of water resistance, which is probably gonna account for maybe some of that case thickness as well. Uh, could be the movement, um, but again, a little bit, um, at least warranted in my mind why it may be thicker with a little extra water resistance, but again, more than likely it may just be the movement. Uh, but overall, I think they're both great options. Um, I did weigh them, the Carrera 127.5 grams, Aquaterra 131.7 grams. And finally, price the Tag Carrera retails at $3,000 versus the Aquaterra at $5,700. So, again, I thought it was a good comparison to put them side by side. If I would have had the uh, the black dial on the uh, Carrera, I certainly would have done that. We do have a lovely um, sun brushed, sun ray finished blue dial here on this Carrera. I'm having a hard time focusing here a little bit on it, but hopefully you can get some of them. I'm gonna take the ring light off and see if that helps at all. Actually, it does not help much, so we'll leave that light on. Again, looking at the center links, I do have tape on this, but you have uh, all polished center links on the Aquaterra, every one of them, so uh, pretty heavily polished. I know some folks are, are not a huge fan of that. Versus the... Um, the Tag Heuer here is, is really kind of almost like every other, um, which is a more of a subtle look on the, the polishing on the bracelet. We have a great teak 
uh, deck dial here on the Aquaterra. So genuinely curious. I'll throw these both on wrist real quick. Uh, if you have a preference, um, given you know the specs, or if, uh, if you know if you really prefer the movement, or do you like just the look of one better than the other? Again, I have a six and three quarter inch wrist. Both of these fit fantastic. Would happily and easily wear either one. I'll hit the lights real quick for a quick loom shot. Before I do that, I also forgot to take a look at uh, take a look at the links here. It does look like you have a half link on both sides of the Carrera, so you should be able to get a pretty decent fit. No micro adjustments, and on the Aquaterra. Looks like you have half links as well on both sides, but again, no micro adjustability on a butterfly style clasp. So I wanted to share that quick. As far as loom, neither one of these are gonna be loom monsters. Do have your hand, your, uh, your hands and small indice um, on the hour markers on the outside on your Carrera. Your Aquaterra is definitely gonna be the winner when it comes to loom, uh, much more loom on the markers themselves, so as well as the second hand I just noticed as well. So as always, thank you very much for viewing. If there's anything I can do for you, shoot me an email, brad at brentlmiller.com, and we'll see you in the next video.